What's going on guys? Chase on Tools here in beautiful St. Simons, Georgia. I am on vacation, but I am bringing you guys a first ride. Behind me, I have a Hovsco Hov Alpha e-bike. I'm on vacation on this little island. It's going to be fantastic. I'm going to ride this thing around. We're going to do a vacation edition first ride of an e-bike. Let's see what it looks like and let's see what it sounds like. And guys, before we get started, this video is not sponsored, not even by WBR Garage where we're giving away an R6, but if you could at least give me a like, I'm on vacation, but I'm still making content for you guys. Let's get on vacation mode. Guys, before we get too far into this video, I just have to make a comment on other YouTube channels that have reviewed this bike. Nobody's reviewing it. They're sending this motorcycle, and by the way, they did send me this motorcycle. They are not paying me, and I can say whatever I want, which you will most certainly find out later on in this video but all the youtubers that i've seen do videos on this bike because you know I'm, i had to do my research to see what this thing's all about everybody's just riding this thing around they're not actually reviewing it i in this video am bringing you guys an actual review of this thing because it's not cheap and you didn't know how good it is also before we get started guys you will notice this first ride is a little strange i only have my 360 camera with a microphone on it this is the insta 360 x3 it's fantastic i'll put a link in the description for it but that's going to be the main camera camera for today, but we not doing the first try without a quad lock, baby. It would not be, even look at that, quad lock even coming in clutch for the bicycles. All right, let's get this video going. All right, uh, let's see what, uh, let's see what this Huffs goes all about. In what I think is the perfect environment for it. All right, so guys, despite the uh, odd circumstances, I am going to try to do this first ride as we typically do first rides, even though I forgot my helmet. All right, guys, uh, talking about the body position on the Hub Alpha real quick. Kind of hard seat, but the seat is big, but I do like that my my body fits on this bike really well, uh, especially like to stand up and do off-roady stuff, which I've done a little bit of, and it's been a great time. I think it's pretty solid and I can just chill back here I fit really well I'm 5'10 got a 32 inch inseam so if you're that size I think this bike could fit you really well let's stop <laughs> I do love the balance on this bike and I think that's because of the body position that it puts you in uh, you guys know I'm always on motorcycles so I'm not typically on e-bikes but I have found myself being able to get very balanced on this bike and I think it's because of those fat tires uh, I've loved them so far so watch this you can get to a full stop and then get going it's so great this might be the most fun I've had on an e-bike yet that's saying a lot so yeah guys balance is really nice uh with such fat tires and those fat tires also allow you to go off road with this bike and normally uh i don't know if i would recommend going off road because some of these e-bikes do not have the uh appropriate suspension to be able to handle off road nor do they have the power but from what i can tell you guys the stuff i've played around with on this bike this thing can easily handle going off-road and uh, you get a lot of traction with those fat tires. I have had such a good time playing off-road and this off-road around St. Simons is very beachy. It's very sandy. So it's typically in an environment that I think 
would be really hard on a bicycle, especially like this, but I've had no problems. And uh, let's all be honest, I don't know what I'm doing. So continuing this power conversation, uh, we are looking at a 960 watt hour, uh, what is it, Samsung LG battery, which is kind of cool. The battery also has a giant LED bar on the back. So if you need a really heavy flashlight, you've got it uh, and it works this good. Uh oh, all right, perfect. We are on a bicycle that has off-road ability. This, it's no problem as it shouldn't be for any bicycle. <laughs> So yeah, 960 watt hour battery. That is gonna be good for a total of 80 miles of range. Now, I will say that 80 miles of range is the max range. So, stop. Oh. <laughs> All right, so that 80 miles max range, you are definitely going to have to pedal. And that's now probably where we should start talking about the pedal assist because throughout this entire video so far, I have been just using the throttle here on the left of the motorcycle or bicycle. I'm probably gonna say that, mess, make that mess up a few times. I think the majority of you guys are probably gonna get this and use the pedal assist, which allows you to pedal and the bike will assist you pedaling. All right guys, so we have six different modes as far as pedal assist and you control them here on the left of the little uh, dial or the little buttons. So right now I'm in zero, no pedal assist. This is full human power. I do like my e-bikes. If I'm going to have an e-bike, I do want it to have pedals because if I don't have pedals, I start having to like, I have to focus on the battery. Whereas if I got pedals, I can just do whatever I want with the battery. And then at the end of the day, I can always pedal it. So I prefer having pedals on my bike. A pedal assist zero, pretty obvious. We go to one uh, and the bike is now going to start assisting me pedaling. And I just, I didn't change my pedaling speed, but now I'm going about three miles an hour faster and I'm barely having to pedal at all. So no, next to no energy for me right now. And I'm also in gear four. So if I go up to pedal two, pedal two, is that stupid place where now me pedaling is pointless. I'm pedaling and there's no friction. So the pedal assist is overshooting me uh, actually pedaling it. I, you know, I can go up to, uh, to seven and at pedal assist two, I'm still barely pedaling, <laughs> but I'm going and now it's caught up. Now I'm going 22 miles an hour and I gotta slow the hell down. So pedal assisting is kind of strange and you can turn pedal assist all the way to five. So we'll do that, which is, this is gonna be silly, but okay. I'm in gear seven at pedal assist five. There's no, <laughs> you're not pedaling at all. There's no point in this pedal assist. Now, if you wanted to pedal really fast, I've got this bike up to 28 miles an hour. All right, let's get far enough ahead to be respectful. All right, so guys, like I told you, uh, you can get up to, I think 28 miles an hour is the fastest I've gotten, but I never had the perfect road. So we'll first do uh, top speed on power only and then start pedaling. All right, let's go. Pedal assist is going to five. This is ultimate speed run of alpha. Okay, non-pedaling, tucked in. Here we go. We're at 19, we're at 20, we're at 21, and power is dying. All right, pedal assist is at five. We are now going for top speed run on your mark. Get set, go. All right, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27. Come on, come on. 27 currently, 26. I'm dying down. I'm dying down. I've lost my peak torque. Hold on, one more push. I can't get past 27. Oh, shit. 27 is the best I got, fam. It's pretty cool, though, to be able to get up to 27 if you're really pushing it. But trust, fam, I was like real pushing it. So, Pedal assist is kind of crazy. If you're on, uh, if you're just trying to like chill, put it in one and the pedal assist will handle whatever you're doing. This bike does have, um, what is it called? Like torque something where it'll sense if you're going uphill 
and it will give you more torque to help you go up that hill. Now, from what I've noticed, this bike does a phenomenal job when it comes to like an elevation change. It might be one of the better uh, e-bikes that I've had, or at least that I've tested. So at the end of the day, Pedal Assist 1 is where I kind of, I stay because I want some feedback from the pedals that I'm propelling the bicycle. I don't want to just be pedaling nothingness. That almost feels, it almost feels weird. All right, so while we're talking about power, let's talk more about uh, power level zero. So when you go to pedal assist or power uh, zero, one of the odd things is, like I told you guys, it has no pedal assist. But the other weird thing with that is it allows you to not use any of the throttle at all. So if you have this all the way in zero, I'm pedaling on my own. But when I do the throttle, it doesn't go at all. Weird thing, if I put it in pedal one, the throttle is now active and it does not matter if I'm in pedal assist one, two, three, four, or five, the throttle is the exact same. That's kind of strange. I think most people that are reviewing this bike think if you put it in pedal assist one, the throttle is gonna activate at one and then if you go to five, it's gonna actually go faster. That's not the case. Once you have pedal assist on at all, you now have the activation of that throttle and you guys can use the throttle. So uh, if you are one of those throttle only people, the, the bike does some weird stuff. So as you guys can see, I'm in pedal assist one right now and I have the throttle fully engaged and I'm not touching the pedals. The bike will get up to 21 miles an hour, which is about where we are right now. And it's cool on the dash, we'll talk more about the dash here in a second, but you can see how much energy the, the motor is putting out. And it gets me to 21 and then it does something weird. Once the bike gets you to 20 to 21 miles an hour, you can see that the throttle's all the way peaked out. Then it dies off entirely. So the throttle bar goes all the way down. The bike then slows down to 19 to 18 miles an hour. And then the throttle comes back up and it pushes you back to 21 miles an hour. And that modulation just continues. When you're on throttle only, you have this very weird modulation of you get to 21, you go back to 18. You go back to 21, you go back to 18. Uh, it's kind of weird. And that does not happen on pedal assist mode. That only happens on throttle only. So here on the sidewalk where typically I would be pedaling, it's not really that big of a deal. But what I noticed is when I'm riding not on the sidewalk and I'm you know in traffic or whatever and I'm just using the throttle, it does feel a little strange that I'm kind of pulsating back and forth. Also, I will note 21 miles an hour is the max speed you're gonna be able to get to without pedaling. If you do pedal, from what I've noticed, I think the highest I've gotten is to 28 miles an hour. All right, guys, I had to pull off uh, because I want to show you guys one other thing that I have a slight criticism on when it comes to the power on this bike, and that is the initial input of torque from going from zero. So uh, I am really happy with the amount of power I get on this bike, but one of the weird things is when you initially, that power initially hits on, it is a little bit of a, of a hit, and I wish it was a little smoothed out. When you're off-road, it's not really as bad, but if I'm here on concrete on a sidewalk, it's a little abrupt. Uh, most people, if you're like really into it, it's probably not that big of a deal, but there was a couple times yesterday when I was uh, riding it and like playing around off-road with this bike. I was going through some off-roady stuff and uh, I got in some really deep sand that I didn't expect to get into and I got a little stuck and I was trying to like wiggle myself out and giving it throttle and brake and trying to work myself out of it. And then it would torque me and I had the wheel to the side. <laughs> it got a little sketchy uh, a couple of times because it would push me sideways. So it's a good thing and a bad thing, right? Because it, it gives you a good amount of power that makes it, this bike really fun to ride. But if it hits, if that initial throttle hit comes on at the wrong time, it, uh, it could catch you off guard. All right, so guys, let's talk about suspension on the Hub Alpha, which is uh, pretty surprising, actually. For a bike that I think I would want to take off-road, at least some, maybe not some serious off-roading, but some, surely. Uh, we have adjustable suspension up front, which is really cool. We got preload adjuster on the left and a lockout on the right, which is going to adjust how much spring tension it has on the front. That makes this bike super fun to be off-road. The front of the bike handles 
off-road or adverse terrain really well. As you guys can see from the camera up front, you guys have been on the front, which is connected to that shock. So like everything's uh, dampened. And even as somebody that doesn't ride a lot off-road, I have been able to control this thing uh, really well and have had a really good time. Now the rear has no suspension. It is connected directly to the uh, frame of the bike. So you're not gonna have any suspension back there, but all is good in the hood. All right, guys, next up, let's talk about the brakes on this thing. Uh, we have uh, like regular like motorcycle brakes up here. We have a... Uh, we have a rear brake on the right side, and yes, I just uh, skid that tire to find that out. And uh, then we have a front brake here on the left. So it's not exactly like a motorcycle is, uh, but they've worked really well. As you can see in here, you can slide the rear out if you want to. Uh, and I've never had a situation so far where I've like said to myself, dang, I wish I had more braking power. Uh, and the levers feel really good. I like the material that they're made of. I got a good uh, grip, even without gloves or anything like that on. Uh, next up, let's talk about the controls in general. Uh, the handlebars, I really like. They have these little um, extended areas that you can kind of rest your palms on if you're kind of like leaning forward on the bike. Actually, those are fantastic. If I, if I didn't have those, I think my wrist would not really know what to do. Now, I will say that when assembling the bike, uh, I ended up over tightening the throttle here on the left and the throttle is on the left. So it's not like a motorcycle where you twist the throttle on the right side. You actually push this little knob in. The plastic that the throttle is made of actually cracked on the back. And I think part of that was I over tightened it. So that was probably a me error, but maybe, uh, maybe get a little more heavy duty plastic on the throttle since that is going to be a component that is used a lot. The material on the levers, I really wish they would have used on the throttle because like the brakes you're going to use a lot, the throttle you're going to use a lot. So something that's going to get that much use should probably get a more heavy duty material. So if I was to recommend a change for a different model, I would definitely change the housing on the uh, throttle. Moving along with the controls, let's talk about the buttons on the left. Uh, the buttons on the left use where you change your pedal assist, your lights, your turning the bike on. Uh, I've got no problems with those. You just hold them in to activate them and or it's just like a press for the pedal assist. Those all have worked uh, exactly as I would have expected them to work. So I got no problems over there. And uh, other than that, I have what I'm calling paddle shifters on my right hand. I feel like they're in a fantastic position and that's how you change what gearing you are as far as the pedaling goes. They have worked fantastic actually. Uh, you get a really good actuation. Like, so I'll, uh, I'll take it down to pedal zero so we can actually work through those. So you push in to go down in the gears and it'll, it'll shift all the way down through the gears here in a second. All right, so we're all the way in one now. All right, so we're in one now. You press towards you the back uh, tab to go up. L listen to that. How good does that sound? I, I think they did a fantastic job, man. I am too fat to be going in zero. Uh, I love the sound of the, <laughs> the paddle shifters. They're so fantastic. I think you can kind of tell from a lot of the video and the shots that I've shown you guys, but the build quality on this bike is absolutely fantastic. They used a really nice paint on this uh, green. I forget what they actually call this green color, but the green on the frame looks fantastic. Everything else is blacked out. Honestly, overall, I'm super impressed with the build quality here. I don't know what I expected out of this e-bike, but it definitely exceeded those expectations. They're paying attention to like really important little details, then uh, I super appreciate that. Uh, next up, let's talk about this uh, dash. So the dash, I will say it's okay. It does its job adequately well. I don't need it to do anything that it doesn't do. It's not super high quality, but like at the end of the day, I'm riding a bicycle, I'm out in, in the world. I, I don't really want to be looking down at a dash, but when I look down there, I get all the information I need. So I guess at the end of the day, the dash does everything it's supposed to. I guess I would kind of want a 
a color one or something like that. I don't even know if I would want that, to be honest. But yeah, dash is fine. Uh, I don't think anybody's gonna complain about it. I don't think anybody really needs anything more than that. You got the app, the Hubsco app that you can download. And the app, you can go into like the ride screen and uh, it'll give you like data and stuff like that. I actually love that app. That app looks really cool. So that app kind of does for me what I guess I might want a screen to look like. And obviously your phone resolution is gonna be heads and tails better than any dash that they could put on a, a little bike. Also, I should clarify, little bike is uh, MSRPing at $19.99. Not so little. So guys, I think that's about covers the entire bicycle. So now I wanna talk about my regular purchaser pass and who do I think this bike is for? I gotta let you know something. About once a week, I get an email from some e-bike company wanting to send me an e-bike so that I'll do a review on it. And uh, every week I say no. Uh, I look at them, you know, just to, just to take a scope of the environment, because uh, I do think they're really cool. And this is a chase on two wheels. I like being on two wheels, which I get to be here. Uh, and most of the time I say no. And it was a situation like this one. And this is not the most expensive e-bike that has been offered to me, but there was some quality level that this bike looked like it had that most of the e-bikes don't. So uh, instead of saying no, I was like, you know what would be super fun? This bike looks like it would be amazing to have at my father-in-law's house, which is here on St. Simons. Uh, so if you guys have never been to St. Simons, which is probably most of you guys, uh, this is like a, a kind of little small island on the coast of Georgia. And I was sitting there looking at this bike and I was like, you know, it's got the fat tires. It's got 80 miles of range. It looks hefty, it looks premium. I was like, that would be the perfect bike to have at my father-in-law's house because uh, my wife and I come visit a couple of times every year. And I'm like, this is a place where it, like walking around, it's got plenty of sidewalks. The island is, I think 13 miles across, like the longest way. So I'm like, with an 80 mile range, I could make it anywhere on the island. And when I'm here, I could scoot around on the bike. So I got this company to send this to my father-in-law's house and I am so thankful I did that. You know, sure, I could have got this thing sent to my shop or whatever, uh, but I don't think I would have been able to really have fun with this thing in Atlanta because I don't live in downtown Atlanta. I live in the like suburbs of Atlanta and I'm, I'm normally like walking or running around my house and there's nowhere to really have fun on a bicycle, but you get this fat tired cool bike, you put it in an island situation and now you can have a great time. And uh, if I have learned anything from this 10 mile run so far, it is that this is the perfect bicycle to have in like a little vacation town. All right guys, looks like we've gone 14.3 miles. Uh, we've circumnavigated the island and by circumnavigate, I mean one way navigated. After spending a day and a half on this thing, I am super excited about it. I absolutely love this thing. There's a couple little things I would change that I've talked through through this video, but overall, this thing feels absolutely fantastic, and I would definitely put this in the top three e-bikes that I have gotten and ridden around in. This was super fun. Totally uh, recommend for a little beachy town or a place that has a lot of bicycling around. This thing has been absolutely fantastic. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to hit the like button, subscribe if you want actual motorcycle content. <laughs> I'm Chase on Wheels. I'll see you guys on the next one. Put OC in your comment down below. Are you guys interested in e-bikes at all? If you are, uh, maybe we'll do more first rides of them uh, and I'll just have to take more vacations. All right guys, I'm Chase on Wheels. I'll see you in the next one. Later.